Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I will be using my Jade Diction 4 hour epoxy resin to create some resin notebook covers, bookmarks and a coaster. It seems that a lot of people are daunted by epoxy resin and they're kind of afraid of taking that first step into resin art. Well, today I wanted to show you how it's not scary, it's quite easy to make something beautiful if you're a beginner without even using any pigments. So that's what I'm doing today, making something very, very beautiful with seashell slices and glitter. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Today I'm using J Diction's 4 hour demold resin. It's a 1 to 1 ratio but and you measure it by volume. Over the years on social media, I've seen so many questions from people saying, why are my bookmarks still bendy? Why aren't they curing? I've seen it time and again. And right, that is the reason why I'm using the four hour demold resin. Because it cures faster, it comes to a full cure faster, it won't be bendy for as long. All resin, if you pour it very thinly, like I will be doing today, will be bendy for two or three days until it's fully cured. But with the four hour demold, it's fully cured a lot quicker. I remember when I first started using epoxy resin and I thought that all resins were the same. They all did the same thing. You could use them for any depth and it's fine. I just had no idea that different resins are for different purposes. <laughs> and yeah, I learned that one the hard way. So for instance, if you have a deep casting resin and you try making bookmarks with them or notebook covers, they will take days and days to cure and they will probably be bendy for a long time too. So you do need to be careful to get the correct kind of resin for the job you're doing. So I'm measuring out equal parts of parts A and B into my measuring cup. I think it was 40 millilitres of each, but it doesn't matter. It won't be useful for you to know that because I actually made too much. That is why instead of just making notebook covers, I made all my bookmarks as well. But that was good because the bookmarks turned out really pretty. So I was glad I accidentally mixed up too much resin. So now I'm giving it a careful stir for about two minutes until all the streakiness has gone. When it looks totally clear, you know the two parts are completely combined. Right, because my table isn't very level, I've got my J Diction levelling table here. It's got a little spirit level in the middle so you can check that it's completely level. So it's a really handy little tool if you don't need much space. I can fit my bookmarks and my notebook covers on this nicely, but not much more. Now, I wanted to protect it because obviously I'm using resin and I put a silicon sheet over the top. I normally use small puppy pads on this and I couldn't find them. And as you can see, that silicon sheet has been folded in half and that caused me problems a little bit because it wouldn't lay flat. So I should have got a little bit better organised before I started filming, shouldn't I? Got something instead of that silicon sheet. Anyway, let's get on with it. My first job was to pour in the resin into my notebook cover moulds and my bookmark moulds. I didn't fill, fill them completely, I just did them about three quarters full. I left a little bit of space because obviously I'm going to be adding things. I'm not adding pigment today, I'm just adding my seashell slices and glitter. But they will obviously increase the volume a little bit. So I'm not filling it up all the way to the top and I'm speeding it up because it took me a while to get all that done and then we were ready for the next step. 
So to decorate my notebooks, I'm using seashell slices and that's really hard to say. <laughs> and they come in sets with lots of different shades and I've gone for the pastel ones for this. I'm starting with the white and I'm going to work my way up towards the middle with the different colours. I didn't completely fill it just because I didn't have enough time and probably I didn't have enough seashell slices either. So I just did the first half with the sea <laughs> with the seashell slices and then used glitter for the rest and i used tweezers and they can just be wiped afterwards it's fine to use them in resin and really that's about all i can say about it it was just a case of getting them all organized in there and yeah, it took me a long time, but you don't have that much time with resin, do you? You know, it starts to thicken up if you take too long. So I had to really get on with it and get speedy and do it as quickly as I could. I did start to panic after a while. I thought, hang on, I'm spending too long on this. <laughs> so with the bookmarks, it did get to a point where I was just pouring it in and giving it a swirl around and I wasn't as careful as this for everything. So once I'd finished adding all the seashell slices, I started adding my glitter. I first of all tried my shaved ice glitter, which I think is from Stampendous, I think it's called, and that looked really nice, but I think felt like it needed something extra, so I tried out some of my different Let's Resin glitters just until I was happy with the results. I can't remember the names of all the different ones I tried, but I've got the set and you can just choose something that complements the colours of your shells. And as you can see, I repeated the process for the smaller notebook cover and for my bookmarks. And I also had a coaster, which I haven't really shown you up until now, just because I had some leftover resin. Once the glitter was all applied, I left them to cure. They were ready after about five hours. It does take longer, the four hour resin. If you're doing something really thin, it will take longer. If you're doing something quite thick, it will probably take less than four hours. You know, it all depends on the thickness of your resin. So here it is, all cured, and let's have a look. So even though it was ready after the five hours, as I said, I was busy on that day. So I didn't do the demolding and filming until the next day. And as you can see, it was a very sunny morning and it was quite hard to really get a good detailed shot of all those beautiful um, shell slices. But I think you can see, can't you, just about how pretty it turned out. Oh, do you know... The, those shell slices are one of my favourite things to use in resin and abalone shell. I just love the effect you get from them. It's so beautiful. And look, there's the smaller notebook cover. I love that one as well with the blue on. So yeah, I was very, very happy with the results. You will see the detail a little bit better later on, but the first job I need to do now is to get rid of all those messy edges because when you're using glitter, obviously the way it goes on is going to be stuck out on the edges and all you need to do to sort that out is take a nail file and file all the edges carefully and it comes off very, very easily. I decided I wanted some wording on the front of my notebook covers and so I went on to my Cricut Design space and found some nice little designs in the Cricut Design library and got them to the right size and cut them out in some black vinyl. Once it was all cut out, I weeded away the excess vinyl and applied some transfer film and then it was ready to put onto the notebook cover. As you can see, I've put that ruler behind it to try and make sure I get my lettering level. And then it was just a case of rubbing it on really well and removing the transfer film. And I think the lettering really finished it off nicely and I liked it a lot better with that on. Of course, you could do it without the lettering if you don't have the, you know, the things to make it. You don't need it. But yeah, I really like it like that. Now then, we need to make the backs for the notebooks. 
And once again, I mixed up some of the Jade Diction for our epoxy resin, just in the same way as before, except this time I'm adding pigment. I chose the blue from the Jade Diction pigment set and I'm just giving it a really good mix in. And then it was simply a case of pouring it in just in the same way as before. This time though, I didn't quite have enough. So I made a little bit of the extra resin and I used the lighter blue to just finish off that bigger notebook cover, just to add a little bit of interest. Once I'd done that, there was a little bit left in my cup, so I decided to coat the back of one of the bookmarks in the blue, just to see how that blue would look from the other side. I thought it might be interesting to see what difference that would make. But also because I wasn't really happy with the rough, glittery back. And if I had had some more of the leftover resin, I would have probably done a top coat on all of the glittery pieces, you know, on the back, not the front, just so that it was smooth on both sides. But, it, the, you know, it's okay with that rough side. I just preferred it with the top coat of resin. So that's an option you might want to think about if you're going to have a go yourself. Another option would have been to mix the glitter into the resin before pouring it on top of the shell slices but then it would have been a little bit tricky to do that because it's such a shallow mold and you need to have a layer of clear resin to put your shell slices onto to have enough space left for your glittery resin might be a bit tricky so yeah that is an option but i think it might be tricky to do it you know with the glitter mixed into the resin sprinkling it on did seem to be the best way but yeah i'll leave that one up to you <laughs> okay it's time for the fun part assembling my notebooks and putting the tassels on my bookmarks i always like doing the finishing touches so the backs of the notebooks turned out really nice as you can see having the two shades of blue there gave an interesting effect for the back so those are all ready to put together. The uh, blue on the back of the bookmark looked really nice. It, you could see the difference there with the blue on the back. Um, so yeah, if I did this again, I think I might do that on all of them. And for the smaller notebook, I put a sticker on the front of that one too. But I also did some black edging with a marker pen just to see how that would look. And I liked it, but I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do it on the larger one. So I had one with and one without. Right then, on to the subject of paper. Now, I had this refill pack that I bought a long time ago at the same time that I bought the mould. I find it quite hard to know which paper to get and it can be a little bit of trial and error. So I'm not sure if I will be able to give you a link for paper. And the other thing is it has square corners and the book cover has rounded corners. So just on the spine side, I used my corner punch just to round them off so it didn't look strange. On the other side, it's fine because it doesn't reach the edge of the cover, so you don't have the square corners sticking out on the other side. And I also made a clear white sheet just so that the front of the book had a white background behind it. And I just thought it would look nicer with the white behind it. So once I'd assembled it all together, it was just a case of adding my binder clips. I took six silver one inch binder clips for this one and I used the one inch ones for the smaller book as well. Now the paper for the smaller book I had to cut by hand because I didn't have a refill. Actually I'm lying, I didn't cut by hand. <laughs> that would have taken a long time. Um, I used my Cricut. I worked out the sizes on my end did it on my Cricut and so I just cut out the pages that way but it's still time consuming if you want to make a lot of these books but I was just making the one so I thought oh let's just do it Um, I'm sure you can buy the I think it's A7 that small planner I'm sure you can buy the refills for them but I just didn't have any at the time so yeah the big book is A5 and the small one is A7 
So there we have both of them all put together and I'm really happy with how they look and I think they will be either a really good gift for myself or perhaps for someone else. Everyone loves a nice notebook, don't they? So that's those done. Let's have a quick look at the bookmarks. Right then, because I've zoomed in, it looks a little bit blurry, but I will show you some clear photographs in a couple of minutes. I'm just showing you the tassels which I got. Uh, these were from Amazon, I believe. I did get them a long time ago, but I'm sure I'll find some more to give you a link. And I just thread them through one side of the hole and then just thread the tassel through the loop. And so here's a clearer image, no blurriness this time. And as you can see, they've turned out really nice and I think they will make a great gift. I would highly recommend the J Diction 4-hour epoxy resin for this because they weren't bendy when I demolded them. Perhaps slight softness, but after a day they were completely solid. So yeah, in comparison to a lot of the resins that you can get, no bendiness really. And here's the quick coaster I made with my leftover bit. And then, of course, we have the stars of the show, the journals, which I am in love with. I think they're just so beautiful. So we've reached the end of the video and I'm really hoping that I've been able to show you that, you know, you don't need to be afraid of embarking on using epoxy resin. It's not scary. You can make beautiful things without even using pigments and it's quite foolproof for one of your first projects. Yeah, I would recommend using additions like this, the glitter and the seashells, if you're a little bit worried about, you know, things going wrong because it can't go wrong can it not really it's when you're using pigments and things that things can go a little bit wrong anyway i hope you've enjoyed the video if you haven't already subscribed and you would like to please do and give me a thumbs up too that would be wonderful and i will see you again next week thank you for watching and bye for now